Welcome to our video series on Mastering FTP. In this video, we'll explore working with PSFTP. In this video, I'm going to talk you through using PSFTP. PSFTP is similar in some ways to PuTTY, but really it's a command line interface as well, but it's more specialized to uploading and downloading files, although really you're going to use it for uploading. I tend to use PSFTP rather than standard FTP software in certain cases, and I find it particularly helpful when dealing with very large files. And I'm talking about files in the hundreds of megabytes or even larger. You know, previously I've dealt with files that are over a gigabyte in size, which is extremely large and takes a very long time to upload. Obviously, it depends on your connection, but with such large files, I just have to leave them uploading overnight because of their size. But I've found with the regular FTP software that there were issues. Sometimes, for whatever reason, it stops halfway through, and it had problems recovering from that. And then I had to start again. And then that caused issues when the upload broke again halfway through. Some FTP software does support resuming, as it's called, which basically means resuming an upload if an upload is cancelled in the middle for whatever reason, you can resume from where you left off. Some FTP software does support this. PSFTP supports this, and it's entirely free. So that's why I'm going to demonstrate it. So let's start it up. Just double-click. OK, to get started, type in Open Host Name. So type in OpenDemoSite2.info, or you would just type in your host name, which is the site you connect to via FTP, and OK, press Enter. And again, you type in your details to log in as Demo Site. That's the username, press Enter, and the password. OK, I've entered the password and I'm connected. And it tells you where you are as well. It doesn't support as many commands as PuTTY, but does support some. For example, pwd, remote directory, and it tells you where you are on the web server. OK, so pwd tells you you are on the server. And l, lpwd, tells you where you are on your computer. And that's important, because you have to be in the folder locally. lpwd stands for Local Working Directory, effectively. So locally, on your computer, you need to be in the folder from where you want to upload the files or folders. So I'm on the desktop. To change where you are on the server, you could just do CD, same as before as on PuTTY, and actually, if you do LS, it tells you what's in the folder. You can't do LS minus AL. You see that it doesn't support all these commands. It just supports certain commands. It supports LS. And OK, let's go into Demo Site 2. So it supports CD. So CD Demo Site 2.info. And it tells you which remote directory you're now in. LS. And we just have Folder 1. OK. And then again, Local Print Working Directory. And I'm on the desktop. And if I want to change my local folder, I can do local CD. But actually, I find that quite a difficult way to work. What I prefer to do is, let me just tuck this aside for now. I just take the PSFTP file and copy and paste it into the folder that I want to upload the files or folders from. For example, I've just created a demo folder. If I right-click, choose Copy, go into the folder, and then right-click Paste, and if this were the folder that had the files and folders that I wanted to upload, then that's what I would do. And I find it a lot easier because then you don't need to use the LCD command or navigate on your computer via PSFTP which isn't a very convenient way to work. OK, so I'm assuming you've copied PSFTP into the folder from which you want to upload. 
and then you CD into the folder you want to upload to on your web server. So now what you want to start doing is uploading. So again, just let me do LPWD. I'm on the desktop locally in PSFTP. And on the website, PWD, I'm in the demo site 2.info folder. And if I do a listing, there's just one folder called Folder 1. Okay, to upload via PSFTP, you use the put command, and essentially, you mean put it on my server from the folder that you were in locally. So, put it on my server. So, you could just type in a file name. Let me just put this out of the way for just a moment. And there's a demo.zip file. So, if I type put demo.zip, it uploads from the local folder, my computer, to the website. And it's done. So now, if I do a listing, there it is. Demo.zip has appeared on the web server. What I find very useful for recovering from broken uploads, you do a re, a re-put. And then, whatever file it is that you want to re-put, re-put demo.zip, and then it says restarting, and it's done. If the file is fully uploaded, it will just re-put instantly because there's really nothing to upload. But if it's only partially uploaded, re-put will start uploading your file from where it previously got cut off. So that's a really useful feature. If you want to upload multiple files, but actually just before I do that, let me just remove the demo.zip from the web server so I can demonstrate this. Remove it, and it's gone. And I do a listing, and yes, we're just back to having folder 1. So if you do mput, and mput I assume stands for multiple puts, so mput, and you can use wildcards, effectively asterisks. So mput star would mean upload everything from the folder on my computer to the folder on my website. Or you could do star.zip, for example, which would be all the files or folders ending in .zip. So if I do that, obviously there's only one, but it's a quick demonstration of the mput command. So it's uploading, and it's done. If we do a listing, the demo.zip file is being re-uploaded. So those are the main commands you'll be using in PSFTP. And as you can see, it's a bit more complicated than uploading via the graphical FTP software, but as I mentioned, the benefit is that it works very well for uploading large files. I find it works very well for that, and if there are any issues with the upload, just use the reput command to carry on with the upload from where it left off.